So once you have everything set on your enlarger and you're ready to do your exposure and you have your red filter under the lens, you're ready to go ahead and get out a piece of paper. Now I'm just using computer paper for this demo, um, but I have it cut down to eight by 10. You are gonna be using your eight by 10 paper to make your contact sheets. Uh, because it is better sized for that, okay? We will, however, trim it down to make a test strip first, okay? Never use a whole sheet of paper for a test strip. You're just gonna waste your paper and go through it much quicker. So we're gonna cut this down so that it will fit the film that we have and the negatives that we have. So at the enlarger station, in the drawer, typically on the right side under the enlarger, there is this gray trimmer. Now, when you're ready to cut your paper down, you can take that gray trimmer out, and I'm gonna set this down here. We're going to trim it down so that we can get all of the negatives on the photo paper. Okay, so I'm gonna line up so I can get all of my negatives on there. But if you notice, I have this part at the very bottom that I don't need. This is the part that I'm gonna cut off so that I can use that as a test strip, okay? So I'm gonna lay this in the trimmer to where I need to cut, okay? Line that up, and I'm just laying my negative sleeve on top of that so that I can see where I need to cut. And then once I have it in place, roughly in place, I'm gonna pull my sleeve out and I'm gonna close this down. Now the way these trimmers, trimmers work is you start with this at the top and you push the blade down in order to cut, okay? So I push the blade down and I pull this down towards me to cut off that portion of the paper. It's okay if it's not an exact cut. You just need to make sure that basically you have a piece big enough to put all of your negatives on there and then we use that leftover piece for our test strip, okay? So I have that pretty well cut, big enough so I can get all of my negatives on there. I'm gonna put this bigger piece away so it doesn't get exposed while I'm making my test strip. So I'm gonna put that in the drawer. You can put that behind your envelope uh, of photo paper, but just anywhere so that it won't get exposed, okay? Now, I do have my red filter, my light is on, but I do have my red filter under the lens. I know that's kind of hard to tell with the light of my camera right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paper, my photo paper, and I'm gonna lay this down with the shiny side of the paper facing up. Remember, the shiny side of the paper is the side that's sensitive to light. And I'm gonna put my negatives down on top of that. Now we wanna make sure that the negatives are laying down on top of it the correct direction because you can see through the negatives on both sides, the front and the back, but there is a correct way for them to be on top of the photo paper. And you can tell one of two ways. You can either pull the negative a little bit out of the sleeve, and remember that shiny, glossier side of the film is the side that is basically the front of the picture. Um, you can also see the uh, frame numbers, okay? Remember the frame numbers are going across the bottom. So if you don't wanna pull your film out of the sleeve, which is totally fine, let me slide that back in there, you can also just look at the numbers. Hold it up to even just the orange light in the dark room and you'll be able to see the numbers on the film and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see my numbers on here because it's reflecting a lot of light off the sleeve. But you're gonna look at the numbers and if the numbers are facing the right direction, well, we can kind of see them there. The numbers facing the right direction, that's the side you're looking at, the side you want facing up. If I turn this over and the numbers are backwards, if you can see some of my numbers there, Okay, my numbers are backwards. I'm looking at the back side. Okay, so I want to be, ha I want to have the front side facing up. Okay, numbers going the correct direction. And I'm just going to put one or two rows of negatives on my photo paper. Okay, um, it doesn't really matter which row of negatives you expose for, but I would make it whatever your average exposure is. So if you have, for example, maybe one row of your negatives is really light uh, or dark compared to the rest, don't use that row for your test strip. Just kind of go with your average, all right? So mine are all pretty average. I'm just going to 
uh, put this under, kind of under the first two, and it's okay that I'm not getting the whole thing under there. And again, I have mine set up to be positioned this direction. So again, I have my photo paper down with the glossy side up. I'm gonna put my photo, or my film, on top of that, also glossy side up. Um, and then in the drawer on the left, under the uh, enlarger at your station, you should have a piece of glass and a piece of cardboard. We're gonna take those out. And the glass is gonna go down on top of the film so that it presses it flat down against the paper. Now, first of all, make sure your glass is clean. If you have any watermarks or spots, fingerprints all over the glass, those are gonna end up showing in your contact sheet. So you do wanna make sure that the glass is clean. If it's not, take it out into the classroom. There is glass cleaner under the sink uh, where you developed film. There is glass cleaner under there and you can just use some paper towels to clean that up on both sides, okay? So the glass is pressing it down on top of the photo paper. Um, that's why it's called a contact sheet because the film is in contact with the paper. So we have that in place. We're gonna be doing a test strip first. So I'm going to lay my cardboard on top of my uh, film or on top of the glass, okay? So I have photo paper, film, glass, and then cardboard all kind of stacked up. And I'm just gonna expose about an inch at a time. Don't try to go frame by frame because as you're doing the uh, exposures, it's gonna be hard to see where those little spaces are. It's actually easier for us to kind of see your different exposure times if you kind of divide them in half, okay? So I'm gonna line that up so I'm kind of dividing that first um, frame in half for my test strip, okay? And we're just gonna expose, like I said, about an inch at a time. So I have that all set up. My timer is set to two seconds. My light is still on with the red filter. Sorry about that, with the red filter under the lens, okay? So we're going to uh, turn the light off by pushing the focus button. Remember, that's your on-off button. Turn the light off so that we can then move the red filter out of the way. Just swing that out of the way. And then we're gonna hit the run button on the timer. So the run will do the timed exposure, okay? That turns it on, counts down the time, and then automatically turns it back off and then we will move this down about another inch and hit run again. And we will just keep doing that all the way down. Two seconds. Okay, and two seconds and two seconds and then I'll take it off and do, and do two seconds additional for that last part, okay? So this last part here is my two second exposure. This one is about, is four seconds, six seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds, and that first little bit that I did is now 12 second exposure. All right, so then once you've done the exposure, you can take your glass off, leave your uh, negatives there, take your paper out, and go develop that, okay? Developing is always the same times. Developer for two minutes, stop bath for 30 seconds, and fixer for two minutes. And when you wash your test strip, remember with test strips, they're not something that you're gonna be keeping. So you don't have to wash a test strip for a full five minutes. You can just put that in there for maybe 10 seconds just to wash off some of that fixer, and then take it out, squeegee it off, and bring it out. Now when you bring it out, take a look at it. Don't just hand it right to us to, have, to give you a time. Take a look at it, see if you can figure out what your time is gonna be based on the, expo the different exposures. And you can even hand it to us and say, okay, I think it's gonna be four seconds, or I think it's gonna be five seconds. And we'll take a look at it and see, you know, we might give you a different time, but that way you're gonna learn what your exposure time will be. And then once, you, uh, once we've determined what your time should be, you will then get out that bigger sheet of paper. I stuck mine here in the drawer. You will then get the larger sheet of paper out and you will set that up the same way with the paper shiny side up, the negatives face um, with the numbers facing the right way on top 
and a glass on top of that. And then you're exposing the whole thing for whatever time we determined is best for your contact sheet. Okay. Um, once you've developed that and you're finished, uh, you want to make sure you put the glass away. This glass, we get glass broken in here all the time. So please make sure that is going back in the drawer when you're all finished. Don't just lean it up against the side at your enlarger station. That is typically where it gets broken. Uh, but actually put that back in the drawer. Okay, we would greatly appreciate that. Now also, if you do your test strip, but you don't have enough time to do your final exposure, remember there's a couple of things that you should write down to make sure that when you come back the next day, everything is set the same and everything is as consistent as possible. So first thing you wanna do is write down which enlarger you are on. Uh, the next thing you want to write down is where your height is. So on both types of enlargers, there is a ruler along that post that the enlarger slides up and down against. And you wanna take a look at where that bottom edge of the enlarger is. So you can even adjust the height just a little bit just to kind of see where you're at. So I'm just like one little line below 14. So I would write that down, record that. I, wanted, I do want to make sure that I'm uh, positive as to my aperture setting. I'm at 3.5. And then write down, if we, if we talked about what your time should be, you would write that down as well so that everything is consistent. Um, and I think once you have done that, you are all set to have a contact sheet. And then the next step will be to make your enlargements.